Hello everyone, welcome back to part three, our annual look at our Blu-ray collections for 2024. Three, part three, so make sure you check out those first two parts if you want to see the whole thing. We're going to be starting part three off with Jackie Chan. We have my favorite martial arts movie of all time, my favorite Jackie Chan movie of all time. Pull this out here because i got a couple different editions of Drunken Master 2. This is the special Japanese box set. You can see on the back here all the, the movie cards and the booklet and the two disc set. Like it's a whole beautiful box set by I just far. I don't is like the, brilliant. these have like a million different titles for the same thing. A lot of Jackie Chan movies. I feel well, like this is so Because confusing. right here we have, this is, and this has the original like full version of the movie and complete with the Cantonese audio track and everything. It's the perfect edition and this one I have because this is the nostalgic version, it's not the preferred version, but I grew up with The Legend of Drunken Master, which is Drunken Master 2, and this has the English dub. This, um, and this is the, like, Does he dub himself? Because some of them I know some he, them he dubs himself I, No, eventually. not in this one. Yeah, some of them he does, but it's, um, it's the Dimension Films home video release of, with the English dub, The Legend of Drunken Master, and this is the version I grew up with. It's definitely inferior to the complete, you know, version here, but that's why I have that one, because that's kind of a nostalgic I want to watch that copy, but... I is... just can't wrap my head around. It's so complicated Yeah. to figure it's out not, the Jackie stuff. Once you get into it, because the problem with the Jackie stuff, especially the older ones, is <laughs> they've been released by so many different studios and stuff in different markets, and sometimes they're dubbed in English, and sometimes they're not, and there's different cuts. But and there's, it's so difficult to figure out what is yeah. what. Well, and this, and then we have the Warner I Archive release of Drunken Master 2, which is much closer to that Japanese box set, but this was really cool when that came out. So it has, this is, has the Hong Kong, this is officially the Hong Kong theatrical release cut of this movie, and this, this is like, that last half hour of this movie is my favorite thing in all martial arts movies, better than even any Bruce Lee stuff, like, I love it. I like Jackie then, better than Bruce Lee. I think he's funnier. Well, it's, he's well more, yeah, it's funny because he's, he's Bruce Lee doesn't do. I think humor. he's more he's relatable more, and more watchable than. Bruce that's Lee. what was great about Jackie. He's kind of is the everyman, and he lets himself get hurt. And actors like working with him in Jackie movies because they make them look good. Because he wants them to look good, and he's relatable. Uh, then we have another Warner Archive release. We have this is great because it's the extended original cut of Mr. Nice Guy, another one I grew up with on VHS and DVD, the old Warner Snapper case. Uh, this is a great movie, Mr. Nice Guy. I think one that is a little more overlooked. I think you have more DVDs of Jackie than Blu-rays. Yeah, as far as a single actor, Jackie Chan has the biggest DVD collection of anyone, even more yeah, than Peter Sellers. Like, Blu-rays just... He's just done so many movies, and like, there's so many, again, there's so many cuts of his movies that sometimes you end up with multiple copies because different versions. Like, here we have the Fortune Star, the Hong Kong release of Jackie Chan's, um, this is a Wheels on Meals. Yes. And I like this one. Great. You, you like this one a lot? Yes. And, you know, that has Sammo. Yeah, Sammo's in. Yeah. I yeah. like Sammo. Yeah. I think I like Sammo better than him. Yeah. I enjoy Sammo. Yeah, I know you like Sammo a lot. But Sammo, this is just a great classic. And again, this is one that like I have a couple different Laserdisc versions of. And then this Fortune Star released on Sammo's cool. I like it. Sammo's he's really fast. Good. I don't know how he's, he's so fast. He's super fast. Yeah. And then we have uh, this release of Armor of God 2, this Fortune Star release. This is one of my all-time favorite Jackie Chan movies. I know some people prefer this again, one of those ones that is confusing, because we'll bring out the um, this here. We have Operation Condor and Operation Condor 2, The Armor of God. But this Armor of God 2 is Operation Condor. And that's very, what I can't, like, I you need, you like, a, one of those yeah. charts on the wall yeah. with, like, because that's the thing, there's sometimes a release like different titles, you know, Project A and Project A 2, so two great duologies, great Jackie Chan movies, and Armor of God 2, one of my all-time favorites, I just really like that one. This was a great collection to get what I would consider a lot of that's Jackie's... That's a weird... There are a lot of Jackie's lesser films, um, and that's why I was like, kind of like, I kind of want to have them, but I don't want the shelf space of like individual releases, so this has Bleeding Steel, Dragon Blade, and Skip Trace. Is that three discs? No, it's a one disc set. Um, I feel so like a lot of those collections are like all on one. And that's what's great about it. It's like, it doesn't take the shelf space because these are just kind of Jackie Chan. I'm, um, I'm not a completionist. Like, I don't know if every movie he's ever been in, but I liked having most of his movies. And 
different like examples of different parts of his career. And the more modern stuff, starting after he really hit America with all the you know, Rush Hour and high, yeah, and um, just yeah, stuff. it's mixed. There's some really good ones, and actually this collection will be one longer sometime this week. The movie Ride On that was released in China last year is out on Blu-ray coming. I just got a notification today. Uh, so oh. Jackie Chan's most recent movie, and that's supposed to be a really good drama about an uh, a stunt actor who's old and his time has passed and things have moved. And he's kind of oh, out of work, so it fits. It's really cool, interesting. I, I think he can that. sell that. He like because some of his modern stuff is good. Like you finally found this for me a long time ago. Blurry DV combo of The Foreigner. Yeah, you like that. Great movie. This is a great drama. These not so much. Um, Dragon Blade was okay. Skip Trace is probably the worst movie he's ever been in, and Bleeding Steel was just weirdly disappointing. So, so the modern stuff is very hit or miss for me with Jackie Chan. One of the all-time classics, Rumble in the Bronx, one of my favorites because it's the first Jackie Chan movie I ever saw. Uh, the VHS tape of Rumble in the Bronx was my most watched Jackie Chan VHS tape. So that's always going to be special. Is that the Twin Towers special. in the background? Yes. That does have even the though towers. they filmed it in Vancouver. Yeah. It's supposed to be New York, but interesting. Uh, then we get into the greatest series. I have a big set of all of them on DVD, but my favorites I have on Blu-ray, Police Story. Um, right behind Drunken Master 2, Police Story 1 and 2 are my favorites. So we have this Fortune Star release from the Jackie Chan Legendary Collection of Police Story 1, which is probably my favorite. 2 is a bigger movie, and I think a lot of people may think it's better, but I like the, the very tight directing and the focus of 1. It feels a little more gritty, so I really like 1. Then we have this regular Blu-ray, Blu not a 4K, but it is a 4K remaster, a rescan of Police Story 2. And then the Criterion collection That's from crazy, the he US. has a collection of yeah. Criterion. I didn't know they did that. Yep, Police Story 1 and 2, and the first ever Criterion was actually on Laserdisc of Jackie Chan, Police Story 3. Oh. But sadly that one, it's weird because it's Criterion, that one is the Super Cop cut, the US cut, not the original version. Oh, that's weird. Which is weird because Criterion normally, yeah. yeah they do that. It's really weird. Uh, but these are the better, you know, these are the full versions of Police Story 1 and 2, a nice little set of those. Uh, and then Police Story 3, we don't have on Blu-ray because we have a couple different DVDs, but Police Story 4, again, the confusion. Oh, is that what that is? Yeah. Oh. It's Jackie Chan's first strike, again, because that, that's how it was marketed in the U.S., but it's Police Story 4. So first strike. This next one was entertaining. I? I think I've seen yeah. 90% of this. I think I you have, it. too. Yeah, the, the Canton Godfather Fortune Star release. I'm pretty um, sure I watched that. This is, a, uh, this is what Jackie's really <laughs> big self-directing moment. This is big budget. He spent all this, this passion project is Jackie Chan directing it um, himself and he really went all out with like the best cameras he could afford and it's a really cool movie. I think it's You don't tell me who so did that. The best cameras he could afford. <sighs> yeah. But again, this is one like we have the the US cut is called Black Dragon. Oh, okay. Um, okay. And yeah, I did see yeah. that. And then I did watch yeah, that. Can, yeah, the Canton Godfather and if like the Godfather and Lady Rose, and like there's like four different titles for this movie, depending on what region. Yeah, I don't so, like that about yeah. Jackie Chan stuff. But it's so confusing. Then this is a really cool Blu-ray trilogy set from Fortune Star, the Lucky Star trilogy. There's so many of these movies, but for me, this initial trilogy, this is these are the classics. Like this Sam. Do you consider this a trilogy? Whole gang. Yeah, I consider it a trilogy. I mean, but yeah, the great classic Winners and Sinners, and has. You know, Sammo and everyone's on there. You I know, love UNB Sammo. UNBL and like everyone. My favorite by far, My Lucky Stars. Which I one's that? really like. I don't know if you've seen this one at all. This <laughs> one at the end, they have kind of the almost looks like a haunted house type thing at the end. No, I don't think I've and seen that. And that uh, super buff Japanese lady. No. Um, one and then Seven Lucky Stars. I don't like quite as much. As far as these initial three, that's probably my least favorite. The second one's my favorite, but this is just a really cool box set of. Three of those. This is pretty. This is a gorgeous release of the Rush Hour trilogy. As far as his American movies, these are easily my favorite. Like I like the Shanghai Noon and Shanghai Nights. Those are fun, but Rush I Hour. I love the like handmade, like yeah. hand drawn. Yeah, it's a beautiful aesthetic. It's really pretty. I wish they'd do that more with. Then we have the Karate Kid no. remake. No. And 
You, That's not Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> no, it's it's still it, it was it was fun for like a, it was fun for what it was. It was it's not the classic, but no. it was fun. So let's see on Jackie Chan. Then we have uh, Jackie Chan did have some sort of a, he was a producer for this one. The inspector wear skirts about oh, you a liked bunch. That one. This was fun. Yeah, this was a bunch of uh, police cadets, a bunch of like a female police cadets moving through and dealing with the misogyny and dealing with the double standards and becoming awesome cops. And it has some cameos of people like Cynthia Rothrock and a lot of kind of legends. So that's a good one. This is. You would hate this, but this is I've never beautiful. Seen that. You would not like it because I think all, I've seen pieces of it. It's all about the melodrama. Like, your, your secret lover is actually your brother that we gave away for adoption. Like, that kind of, like, melodrama. You're you not gonna love like it. soap opera I love it. Stuff. But Chow Yun Fat is in here, and Gong Li is a legend. And, but Curse of the Golden Flower, I love this. This is one of, visually one of the most astounding movies. Everyone great, gives a great, just, like, sappy, dramatic performance. I love the difference between the Chinese movies that you watch versus yeah. the Chinese movies that I watch. You like, watch. this is my kind of movie from China. You like the Farting Princess movie. Excuse me. It was fun. What did we watch this okay. year? Was, what did we yeah. watch this I year? Know, I know, I know. We watched a saying, beautiful drama. In general. So stop. In general. Um, my favorite, I haven't seen that, though. My favorite Ang Lee movie, even over Crouching Tiger, That's anything. on my list. Love it, yes. Eat, drink, man, woman, as far as, you know, as we talk about dramas. Um, I also have a thing, there's a couple other movies. I have a thing about, well, I should bring this up. This is an Ang Lee movie. Um, this is an Uzu, a that Japanese looks good. film. To that you might look. like this one, actually. This one does look good. Tokyo Twilight. I'm still trying to get the Uzu collection on DVD. That's about the, the Eclipse series from Criterion. But as far as an individual movie, this is my favorite of his. I, for some reason, really like the stories. These I brought them up together. The story of a father who is struggling, whose wife has died, and he's struggling to raise his daughters, and like the different relationships there. And each one of them, this has three daughters, this is just two, there's always that one older daughter who feels obligated to take care of her father and stay with the family and you know just kind of follow in his footsteps and then there's the other daughter who's kind of crazy and off on her own and doesn't want to be you know held down and so very different stories with those elements that tie it together i don't know why i like that's that that's not what i thought that was then. but yeah i, I like thought it. that was the movie one which one what? oh no that's i know what you're talking about well yeah you'll that you would i think really like but i really not like that, these then. and um, but and Ozu has a lot of a lot of his films have very you know very like it's all about the family. I don't dynamic. like the Blu-rays that are clear on the top. I think it's cool. It's, but you know, Tokyo Twilight and then Eat Drink Man Woman is just I. That's one of my yeah, that's been movies. you've one liked of, that for years. Yeah, I watched it on Laserdisc, VHS, whatever. This is great. This is a great commentary and a lot of fun. Giants and Toys. Uh, this is a movie from the '60s from Japan that deals all about the changes after the reconstruction of Japan following World War II and the hyper-commercialism and it's about competing companies and they all focus on this kind of goofy ditzy girl as their kind of mascot thing. It's all about the rise of commercialism in Japan. I think I would watch that one. It's, it's fun. Um, I think you'd like this. There's a bunch in here that I think you would no, like. No, I'm not watching you that. You don't think? It's very depressing. No, I'm not watching Ocean. This is the movie version of Ocean which was a very popular series in Japan and abroad. I feel like I learned, really? I learned that it's weirdly super popular in the Middle East. Hmm. Which is interesting. But this is the movie version. Has from anyone the else heard 2000s. of this? Because Stefan's like obsessed with Ocean and. No, it's like it was a it's a great like I like the kind but of you have drama. the series on Laserdisc. I'm like, part of the series, not the whole thing. It's too much. But I've never even heard of, and it's supposed to be like it basically to doesn't like, yeah, but it doesn't exist really in North America. But that's why basically, I'm interested. Does that has anyone it's else even like heard Asia of this? and randomly the Middle East? It's really popular. But I've never heard of that's, that. This is the one you're thinking. Yes, of. that's the one I'm. Thinking I of. love this that one. Movie. I want to yeah, watch. Yeah, Col color me true. Um, it's a, that looks good. It's a celebration of the love of film and basically a classic actress that this man becomes obsessed with this old movie and the act, the character from the old movie comes to life and they, it's a love story. Love that because it really is just a celebration of loving old movies and old film and it's great. Uh, one you would probably not like. You told me I, I wasn't think, allowed to watch that. You said, yeah, I don't I'm think fly, like Flying Colors you're not going to like. It's all about a troubled teenage girl that kind of goes against the grain. That's why she has sort of like the blonde hair. Is that what hair. you are? A troubled, troubled yes, I'm a troubled teen teenage girl. From Japan. But that's why like visually it's like she has the blonde hair and like the standout kind of look and all about her kind of dealing with life. I'm not as much into the Japanese movies as you are. No, you're much more into Chinese movies. But different um, than yours. 
Yes, very just different. Uh, but we have Memoirs of a Teenage Amnesiac, which is another one of those kind of just teen drama movies. You love teen drama stuff. I do. I do. I really like teen drama movies, but yeah. And now, going from the imports, we're going to go... Oh, Actually, we one. have another import. Mm -hmm. We this when movie we you first, discovered. When we first got Netflix, mm -hmm. I think we had just moved in together. Yeah. And well, when we first changed from, because you had Netflix, the yes, DVD I had, thing for I had years. the DVD send out thing forever. Yeah. I don't know, do they still do that? I didn't know if it's done. Unless you're in like Alaska or somewhere. I'm sure it's done, yeah. Um, I found this movie and I was like, what a great movie. And Stefan resigned himself to a terrible evening it didn't, watching yeah. a crappy Amanda yeah. movie. And then he decided he really liked it. It was great. And I'm so excited it came... Physically, kind of. Physically, but it is one of those on-demand, like... If you can yeah. watch this. I don't know if it's still on Netflix. It's called Housebound. This but is... New Zealand. It's, it's, New Zealand. Yeah, New Zealand. This is fantastic. This is the type of horror movie I love. I love either, like, super psychological or, like, horror dark comedy. comedy. Yeah, dark comedy stuff's good. This is, this is phenomenal. This is so great. Everyone was cast mm -hmm. brilliantly. It's fun. I love it. They're this doing an American remake, which I think is going to be terrible. I don't but... know how you could redo that, because, like, yeah. look at these guys. This is fantastic. I love that movie. And so do you. Yeah, I, thought it, was, I thought it was great. You didn't like this, but I'm glad you watched it, because you watched that horrible remake. But we had the collector's edition of, for me, a, a classic kind of slasher horror picture. This is what I picture... Black Christmas, the collector's edition. With horror movies, yeah. it's like this. Like, there's so many plot holes. Yeah, it's just I don't, like, what I'm, is happening? That's the, yeah, neither it's of us. We don't have a big horror collection because we're neither of us big horror people. But there's occasionally one, like, I don't know why, but out of, like, the bunch, there's always, I used to watch a bunch on VHS, like, late night TV. And occasionally there's one that stands out for me. But I always like the original Black Christmas. But I'm not, yeah. I'm not a horror. I still can't believe this is, like, really high up in your list of movies you have to watch because you've never seen it. It's crazy. Probably my favorite slasher movie ever, John Carpenter's Halloween, which, I mean, come Never on. seen it. Come on. I don't just know. Absolute classic. And again, that's the only one. I don't Should care. I watch that? Is that worth watching? After the first one? Do you one, think that's worth it? I just don't care. I just, that first one. This, I was so disappointed. I was so disappointed. Because this is, well, yeah, this is the we first. The William Castle double feature, 13 Ghosts and 13 Frightened Girls. I thought these were fun. These are cheesy I never fun. watched the second one, and 13 Ghosts was terrible. I thought this was their cheesy fun. They are it William Castle. Terrible. But the reason why we even got this is because one of my I, I thought these favorites. were great. But yeah, but one of your favorite movies again. Your type again, of, my type. We'll call it B yeah. movies, which early is, early two thousands. I uh, caught it on the Sci Fi Channel. That's what you love. What's that company called? I don't know if this is. Uh, that. That's a Scream Factory, I think, isn't it? Yeah, but there's yeah. that like. I don't know. There's a company yeah, yeah. that that makes a lot of them. It's Thirteen Ghosts. This is the collector's edition, which is so and beautiful. You love that, yeah. I love this movie. This is a fantastic movie, and I just, it doesn't get the love. It doesn't get the love. I just, it's amazing. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. Miss Honey's in it. <laughs> yeah, that's why I like it. He's great. I just, yeah. And the guy from Monk. And Monk, yeah, Miss Honey and Monk and Shaggy. Yeah. Or, or... <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. What else do you want? Uh, more my style, the 80s. We have the Lost Boys, which is... I've never seen that, but I, think you would I like, feel like that, this is super 80s. That picture, I've yeah. seen a million times, because yeah. that's always for sale always, everywhere. Always, everywhere. Super 80s, might be my favorite vampire movie ever. It's oh, that's super that great. weird thing. It's yeah. super great. Do you remember that, that clip goes around all the time, yeah. the guy playing saxophone? Like, But yeah, Lost Boys. Another great. one I haven't seen. Should Another, I watch again, this? Is when it When it comes it? to horror, it's mostly, just, it's mostly the very tail end of the 70s and into the 80s. It's the only kind of stuff I usually like, but... The Nightmare on Elm Street, and again, this is another one of those giant franchises that I only care about the first one. After that, I couldn't care less. Zero interest. But this was a staple of the VHS, you know, rental store, and that was a great 80s classic. This one is amazing. And it's weird because a lot of West Craven people uh, don't like this one, but we both like because we like yeah, because we I, like horror comedy. This like, is oh yeah. my gosh, the people under the stairs. That's funny. Oh my I know, gosh, I know you want to adopt that kid. I like, want to <laughs> adopt this little boy because he is he's my favorite. Yeah. He's, he's so great. This is, oh, such a great. And everyone else is like, ew, yeah, why? Just... I don't 
don't know. I don't think I know this is you worth consider having. It extra, I know you consider it overrated, but... I um, think this is super overrated. The Exorcist, and this is the that extended director's cut, which I think came out, was it late, like late 90s? I forget exactly when that popped up. Uh, but yeah, The Exorcist, just a horror classic. Just one of those classic movies that every once in a while I go back to. It's not one of my favorites either, I think it's, but I it's... Think it's, I think it's, it's it's a horror movie. I think it's a good, a good. It's bleh. But it's I don't think it's just a, it's a good classic that every once in a while I come back to. You know what I don't like? I Stephen know. King. But I love He's this weird. miniseries. He's the really Steelbook weird. Blu-ray of it, the miniseries. Uh, th- what sells me on this? There are two things I really like about this interpretation. I like the first half with the kids. I thought that's well done. And Tim Curry as Pennywise is one of the funniest things in the world. At the same time, still little. Scary. Well, because that's what Tim Curry kid. is. Yeah. He's a little scary. He's, he's a little scary before. But you're kind of like, hmm. But that's why I love Tim Curry. Like, I think without that, that wouldn't have, wouldn't be something I'd rewatch. Stephen but... King stuff is so weird. Yeah, a lot of the interpretations. I'm Not just, even I mean, interpretations. I mean, at least, the books but this, are weird. Well, yeah, the books are weirder. I mean, this didn't include the yeah. pedophile gangbang, like, stuff. Like, but... That wasn't really pedophile, though. It was <sighs> it's just weird. really weird. I've never seen this either. This is one of my... Favorite classic cheesy monster movies. Uh, it has the 3D version as well. 2D and 3D. Creature from the Black Lagoon. But you know what Stefan did make me watch? This was a whole franchise again that, again, I just like the first one. You know what he made me watch? What did I make you watch? Oh, come on. This is funny. This is stupid. This, this yeah. is stupid. This is why I don't funny. like watching a lot of things you make me watch. Because this okay, is what I get There are two sometimes. classes of things that I make you watch. One is, like, Mac last year... No, like one year last year, I made you watch Vertigo and Rear Window. Velociraptor. Like great yeah. classic yeah. movies that you should watch. Sometimes I make you watch just goofy, funny trash, but Killer Clowns from Outer Space. And I feel like I it should like that it's because funny. it's like a weird that's, thing. That's why I showed but it to you. But there's a line. Because I, sometimes I show just... you more artsy stuff, and sometimes I thought I thought this would fit your. No, that was. I stupid. feel like. And you know what the really problem is? Stupid. This was made in the '80s. I feel like if this was made in the early 2000s oh, with yeah. a Sci-Fi Channel, you probably oh, yeah. would have liked it. So weird. Because the clowns would have had more of a backstory. They wouldn't have just so been weird. like creepy. You know what's not good? This is the funniest horror movie ever made. It's not. I. It's not. I like almost no. pee myself laughing. It's disturbing. Sleepaway Camp. That's it. Collector's edition. No. Why do we have I, a collector's edition of that? That's stupid. Blu-ray DVD combo. Again, this is another one. There's three of them. The other ones, I couldn't care less. The first one is a classic. I, it's just, it's, I don't know what it is about it. There's just certain movies that for some reason I find them to be unbelievably hilarious and I will crack up the and way through. it's it. weird because it's but just But the ending's a, terrifying. The, the last scene yeah, terrifying. is, but it's interesting, mm-hmm. but I think up until that point, it's like really badly done. So it, but it's funny. But, but I, it's not trying to be funny. No, no. It's trying no. to be like a horrifying slasher. Yeah, yeah. And like, it's not. Yeah. It's but it's, I don't think it's funny. funny. I think I know, it's yeah. just If you stupid. don't think it's funny, you're going to find it's boring. And you found it boring. I found it super boring. Like, I've shown it to other people. Like, the, Patrick was the, over and watched, he watched it for the first time. He thought it was hilarious. We're cracking up. That very last scene. Like, yeah, that's scary. Okay, that's a scary image. Now, yeah. like, but that's interesting. Yeah. I don't know. It's weird. And to pause for a moment there, someone's at the door delivering Ride On, the latest Jackie Chan movie, which uh, came out in China last year for at what point I wasn't even sure we were going to get it here uh, and it showed up. I was really happy and it's getting really good reviews. It seems really interesting so I had to add this even though I did Jackie. Uh, and I'll just read the back here quickly. It's a really interesting premise so I was, thought it seemed really good. But after debt collectors attempt to seize the beloved stunt horse of a washed up aging stuntman, video of the dynamic duo's escape goes viral on social media, immediately reviving his movie career. But in the midst of this triumphant return to film, the furious debt collectors return with a court order that no amount of fame or acrobatic antics can help the pair evade. So it's a washed up old famous stunt man who's well past his prime. They're going to take his old horse that he used to use in all his stunts and he wants to go steal and rescue the horse and turns into this like beloved thing. I don't know, horses back. are expensive. I don't know that he can afford that. <laughs> But it seems like really fantastic. So, but getting back on track after that, we have The Shining, one of our few 4K releases. Definitely one of the greatest kind of psychological horror. Much movies better than ever. the book. The book I is... agree. Yeah, very I different though. Kubrick took the book and was like, "Eh, I'm doing my own thing." It's very, very different. I understand, especially as as like a writer, I understand why Stephen King hate. Like, from what I've seen, it seems to really hate this movie. Because if you take your work and do something totally different, it's but a completely it's different. It's brilliant. Thing. But it's it's it is brilliant. As, as a movie, great. And one of the very few 
uh, Dario Argento movies. I'm not a big horror person and like, all the giallo Italian slasher stuff, but I like Suspiria. Super colorful, all about the witches. Uh, just fantastic. And I'm all about witches. Are you? So it's a, a great classic. Then moving into David Cronenberg's The Fly. Uh, one of the other rare cases of a, a remake definitely being better. The original was like a fun, kind of almost cheesy sci-fi horror movie. Uh, they really love the 80s one, though. Then the Evil Dead steelbook. Stay away from the trees. Yeah, stay away from the trees, especially if you are one. And this gorgeous Evil Dead 2 steelbook. This is really pretty. These have always been great classic movies. I've always been a big fan of... Bruce Campbell and just about anything. The 25th anniversary edition of Evil Dead 2. A lot of great special features. I love getting into the remake, the uh, behind the scenes stuff on Evil Dead 2. And then Psycho, another yeah. classic. One of the Alfred Hitchcocks we've not seen yet. No. Great movie. My favorite Alfred Hitchcock movie. I'm a big Cary Grant fan. I just love this sort of adventure feel of North by Northwest. Nope. Another great classic. One you did like when you saw it. Yes. I know you like James Stewart. Yes. Rear Window. Another classic movie. This is probably outside of North by Northwest. My second most watched movie of those. Because it's, I find it to be a very rewatchable movie. Vertigo. Genuinely. Velociraptor. <laughs> if you missed that video, <laughs> look at our uh, video. We did our top ten movies that are new to us for 2023. Amanda had not seen Vertigo before. She watched it this year. And... To understand what she's talking about with Velociraptor. <laughs> but yeah, this is a fantastic movie. Always been one of my favorites. Glad you finally watched it. One of my favorites that you refuse to watch. No. Casablanca. No. One of the all time greats. Just. No. 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 Uh, and then The Ten no, Commandments. No, no, no. My uh, mother was very religious, so we grew up with a lot of those. Your mother's still religious. Yeah, but then she was much more extreme when I was little. To, uh, but so we grew up with a lot of those big biblical epics, and this is one of them that for me still stood out, and I still really enjoy Ten Commandments. Then we have a German movie, Fritz Lang's. It was two movies that were really one project, but they released individually a lot of places: The Tiger of Ishnapur and The Indian Tomb. This really cool Blu-ray set that came out just a few years ago. So really, it's um, if you like Indiana Jones, it's very similar kind of vibe to that. Good movies, Cleopatra. I will the never Elizabeth Taylor be Cleopatra. Able to sit through that. I like it. I it's it's not again. Yeah, it is super long. I, I've seen a bunch of different versions of Cleopatra over the years. On uh, this one, just under the drama of everything that happened behind the scenes and the just the the I don't know. It's it's one of those gigantic, very classic Hollywood pictures. My favorite disaster movie of all time. Ugh. Irwin Allen's The Towering Inferno. Ugh. That on... movie is like five hours long. No, it is not. It's not it a, feels it's like not it's five close. hours long. Not even close. It's like two hours long. Uh, uh, Towering Inferno. This is just great. I lo this is one of those movies I love watching on Laserdisc. And it's like, you yeah, just love watching it. it. I do. It's like i got to get the Blu-ray for that. I've watched like 20 hours of that movie. Poseidon Adventure. That's another... They're great. I feel like a lot of those disaster movies seem longer than they are to me. Because they just why. keep going and going. But you like this one, which is nowhere near as good, but it was that better. Is it was better than I thought it was going to be. I don't know why you like this so much. But Deep Blue Sea. Yeah! This is a great movie. This was fun. You loved Samuel L. Jackson's scene. That, that was, was fantastic. It, I was surprised by it. Your face was. Some 80s classics. We have either a complete set of all the Karate Kid movies on DVD, and then the two favorites, and then we both agree, Karate Kid 1 and 2. Those are the great classics. The other ones are they're decent movies, but 1 and 2 are really the ones that we go back to. I actually like two a bit more. I know one is more of the classic standard, but I actually really like two. Uh, my favorite Rockies, you know, Rocky, I know, man, is like, we have Rocky on every format. Uh, but Rocky, my favorite ones, Rocky 1 and Rocky 2, the ultimate classic, the amazing sequel. Rocky 2 is actually my favorite Rocky movie. I watch those all the time. I love Rocky. Grew up with those. Yeah. Uh, Ever After, Drew Barrymore. Uh, so beautiful. It's great. I, this might be my favorite Cinderella story, like ever after. Is, is so good. So good. Then this double feature stumbled upon recently with Practical Magic and The Witches of Eastwick. Uh, Practical Magic is great. We both I really like that movie. That movie. Uh, Sandra Bullock, big, both big fans of. You usually don't like Nicole Kidman, but you like no. her in this. Yes. It's a great witch movie. Uh, the Witches of Eastwick, Never for seen me. That. 
It's it's okay. I always thought Jack Nicholson was weirdly miscast in this though. He Jack just doesn't Nicholson's fit. always creepy. He just doesn't. Yeah, it's easy, yeah, he doesn't fit in that one. But it's a, it's a decent movie. Robin Williams, Aww. fair to both of ours, the 25th anniversary edition of Good Morning Vietnam. I love Robin Williams. This is fantastic. You would never watch this, though. No. Uh, Sunset Boulevard. This is a classic, an absolutely wonderful film. I feel like we're getting into the... Yeah, I think we're getting into a lot of my classic Hollywood stuff that you don't like. Uh, this is actually a gold cover Italian release of Rita Hayworth in Gilda. It's the second one you got. Yeah. The first one was all cracked. And yes, yeah, this is one of the rare cases where I had to send one back because it came, the case was destroyed. Uh, but this blur ray release from Italy of oh, Gilda. Lolita. Might be my favorite Kubrick film. Lolita. My favorite Louise Brooks film, Beggars of Life. Really happy this got a, an excellent Blu ray release. Um, not a lot of silent films, and frequently they're. Overly expensive. This is a Kino Lobor one. That was a really good set. Regards of Life, Louise Brooks. And one of the twin best first ever Best Picture winners, because it's for a two year span. The from the first Academy Award 27 and 28 Best Picture winner, Claire Bow, Wings. Claire Bow, one of my favorite actresses. I wish there was more Claire Bow on Blu-ray. That's the one thing of her her catalogue of movies. A lot of them aren't even on DVD officially or anything, a lot of them on Blu-ray. A lot of her stuff is hard to find. That's why I was happy to get Children of Divorce. I, I, I agree. It's not one of my favorite Claire Bow movies. I have There's a lot of DVD ones that we have, but a lot of them are like print-on-demand or like low-quality alpha video. Um, so even though this is not one of my favorite Claire Bow movies, just to be able to get a good quality Claire Bow movie on Blu-ray was a big deal. A uh, recent edition, a, an Italian movie that I always wanted to watch. I could never find a good copy with English subtitles. Uh, the Facts of Murder. So I found that from exploring Claudia Cardinale movies. And this was great. A robbery investigation turns into a murder investigation in a very film noir style. Not very Amanda. Then Sophia Loren in Marriage Italian style. So it's, it's off offensive. the wall. Off the wall and crazy. Offensive. Yeah. And then we have Yesterday, Today, and Tomorrow, also with Sophia Loren. A two-disc collector's edition of that. To that one. Next we have The Disaster Artist, which is really funny. This is the companion piece, companion piece <laughs> to the room. To the room, which is, yeah. Which is with James Franco, mm -hmm. and very good. funny. Yep. One we haven't watched yet. Best friends. Best friends or fiends. It's Tommy Wiseau's latest attempt. Yeah. Which Mando I feel loves like the once room, he, so. but when he tries, he can't do it because he yeah. doesn't understand. Yeah, when he tries to do it on purpose, it doesn't. Which work. is why I'm yeah. not sure. About I'm not sure, but we'll check it out. Um, then we have one of my favorites, the Robert Redford and Jane Fonda movie adaptation of the play Barefoot in the Park. Love this one. I love '60s romantic comedy type stuff and based off the play. This is Lands of the Lost, the which Ferrell. we need to get on DVD. Yeah, this one of those ones, have, yeah, we want to change it out to just a standard DVD. Will Ferrell stuff is on yeah, DVD. Yeah. I just haven't stumbled across it because I'm looking up for like a thrift store. Yeah, that's not a movie eventually we'll, we'll find that's it. That's not a movie we'll pay much for. Young Frankenstein. Yes. One of the is, greatest comedies. I love that one paired with Blazing Saddles. The great Mel Brooks movies. And I feel like Space the most balls. popular. Spaceballs. I feel like that's his most popular. It might be. I don't know. I mean, Young Frankenstein is clearly the best. Uh, yes, Space, Young Frankenstein is the best. I think, but I think Spaceballs. That's the most recognizable. Spaceballs actually wasn't super successful when it first came out, but I feel like this is the one that on VHS became like a super popular movie. Then we have uh, the original Pink Panther, one of the only ones released individually. Like those movies, there's one Blu ray set, which we don't have in the collection yet because it's hard to get. Uh, but the original was released separately, and then just a few years ago, Imprint Films released the return of the Pink Panther on Blu-ray, which this was an important one because the rights were different for Return, so a lot of the complete series sets don't include Return on DVD. Some do, some don't, like the Shot Factory does. The older one does not. Return was always a weird one, so it was important that that one got an individual release. And then... <laughs> The Millionaires, this is another one from Italy. Sophia Loren and Peter Sellers, this is an Italian Blu-ray of that movie, which feels very appropriate for Sophia Loren. 
No, I have to watch this one. I, this one I think you'll genuinely like. Uh, Mr. Peabody and the Mermaid with William Powell. This is probably my favorite William Powell movie aside from my man Godfrey that Merle is not in. Because usually I like it when he's paired with her. But that is a fantastic movie. As well as one of those kind of annual movies, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. I think this is obnoxious. I don't understand how you don't like this movie. This is so funny. I'm a big John Hughes fan because I... Probably my favorite thing to just kind of casually rewatch over and over again is 80s movies, especially like teen movies. So that's... Goodbye. Speaking of, another thing that Amanda hates because she cannot stand Chevy Chase. I don't like looking at it. She won't even be around it, but I really like Vacation, the National Lampoon's 30th Anniversary Edition. That's just, that's a classic comedy. And then... I have a thing for I the Christmas I have on different formats, uh, Blu-ray, then I also have European Vacation, which a lot of people don't like anywhere near as much as Christmas or the first one, but I feel like because I grew up as a stupid American family going to Europe, this one kind of hit a nerve for me, like it just kind of, I don't know, felt special. So I like that one. He's gone. You can come back. You like this movie. Is he safe? Yeah. I don't like him. He makes me nervous. I don't, he's just, he's wrong. Is it crazy? There's something wrong Is it with crazy him. coke fiend? You like this movie though. Overboard. I love that. With Kurt Russell and it's Coley beautiful. Hunt. That's a great movie. Yeah, I know you love that movie. Your mom likes that movie too. As well as Who Randall's. doesn't like that movie? It's a great movie. We have a steel book, a beautiful steel book of Ghostbusters. I always feel like every time I watch that, I should like it more than I do. Hmm. It's yeah, not no, a bad you're not movie. A big fan. No, you're not a big fan. Yeah. But it's just not. I really like Ghostbusters. I, Ghostbusters I like two I'm is okay. Not. We have like a we have a collection a collection on DVD with, that includes two. Two is okay. I don't really come back to it very often though. But the first one. I don't, I come back I don't all the time. dislike it. I just I feel like I should love it, yeah. and I don't. Yeah. Uh, one thing I do love: the Mystery Science Theater Ugh. 3000, the movie collector's edition. But what I love about this more is the behind the scenes because the movie is really just an okay, average episode of the show. It's good, but it's not like anything extraordinary. But man, the behind the scenes, the creation of this, are fascinating, and I do like the, the series. It's racism. Love this. You always. Yeah. You silly Italian. You always get offended by a lot of these these movies. But I really love my cousin Vinny. Fantastic. This it's one of my, the funniest movies ever. Marissa Tomei is. We argue perfection. about this a lot. Perfection. Because I think this should go with the superhero movies. Maybe okay, maybe. And Stefan says it shouldn't because it's just, just an kind 80s of the comedy. Movie. But it is. It so is let me know what you think. Because he's in the background of one of the like. Uh, yeah, he's, an, end so, he's okay, an end game. He's an end game too. You wanna, okay, you want to so put him in? I'll put let it in me know what you think. Okay, we can put it with Howard the Duck. Howard the Duck. Howard the Duck. Does this belong? I just watched it last week. With the Marvel movies, because if you look very closely, it does yeah. say Marvel. I know, because right it there. is a from Marvel comic. I know we can put so, it with the Marvel movies. I feel like it should go with. Well, I don't the know. It just, it just feels weird. Yeah, it belongs there. But George Lucas presents Howard the Duck. Not a great movie, but it's hilarious. It's great. I'll leave this to the side so you can put it with the Marvel movies. Yeah. It makes me happy. Yeah. A newer Christmas classic. The. How's that goof- newer? When know. did this come out? To That's me, this not feels newer. very. New. To me, when I think classic Christmas, I think like it's a Wonderful Life or like Rankin Bass, like eighty-year-old movies. This is only like twenty-something years old, I guess. Thirty. It's years only old. twenty years old. So, however old this is, what year is it? To me, I think time stopped in like two thousand one. Uh, but Jingle All the Way, that is newer. No. It is newer. To me, I consider the Santa Claus a newer Christmas classic. When you so say fun. Christmas classics, I think of like. Or like White Christmas, movies from like the 40s and 50s and 60s. I don't uh, think our siblings were born yet. I think, to me, if it came out like 90 or sooner, it's newer. Not new, newer. But Jingle okay. All the Way, I okay. watch that one every Christmas. It's silly, it's goofy, it's ridiculous, but it, it's funny. So you just, just put the cookie down, Amanda. This is Doubtfire, another Robin Williams classic. This is the weirdest... This is so... This so is, weird. This is some of the most perfect casting ever. Like, what other humans could be fulfill these roles? Shelley Duvall and Robin Williams. Popeye. This is so underrated. Like, Bluto, the actor I got for yeah. Bluto. Everyone is great. This is a good movie. It's weird how it just... This is another one of those movies that I feel like developed a cult following over time. It wasn't considered good. I'm not a huge well. fan of this, but my dad loves Popeye. Yeah. So it's great. we watched that a lot. I like that. I like Ron Williams stuff, and I really like that. This was actually decent. You were surprised how much you like these, because I, well, first one. Uh, Crocodile Dundee, one and two. Two is, it's still fun, but it doesn't compare to the first one, but I really like Crocodile Dundee. This you love way comedies. more than me. This is fun. Alright, I love the build-up at the end. Clue, the movie. It's just it's Tom an Curry hour, goes it's nuts. Like, yeah, it's like an hour and a half of build-up to, to Tim Curry at the end. 
do, doing his, his spiel. And what's great is this has all three endings, so you can explore all that gimmick. I understand why they tried to do it in theaters, but it didn't quite work. But uh, yeah, it is fascinating to see all three endings, because it, it really is just a build up to Tim Curry at the end. This Who's one's a 90s classic. Beetlejuice. This is from the 80s, my Amanda. Oh, is it? Is I always think everything because from the 90s is from the 80s. Everything from the 80s, 80s is from the 90s. Because you watched it in the 90s. Because you watched it on VHS in the 90s. I understand why, like, mentally. But, uh, yeah, Beetlejuice. Fantastic. Which I'm actually, you don't seem too keen on it, but I'm curious about the sequel they're doing. He's so old, he can't do it. I don't know. I don't know. I, don't, I think Jenna so Ortega being the daughter, though, that's a good casting choice. Like, I think... You just want to see Jenna Ortega. That's cool. Uh, the Austin Powers trilogy. I do not like Austin Powers. I know you don't. I really like the first two. Gold Member was a little disappointing. But the first two, I've watched so many times. I really like them. This, almost all the casting was fine. Yeah, except Russell for Crow, one that was... Just, uh, he just, he, I don't know what the heck, because everyone else, I mean, you can't be Hugh Jackman. That was, John John. He's, that was disturbing. For a movie version as an actor, he, he is incredible. This, I really like, even despite Russell Crowe not being great, as a movie adaptation of Les Mis, like, Les Mis is, is my my favorite thing that I've ever seen in, in a theater before, like, out of actual theater. It's really production. good. Like, so I, I loved that. Um, it's just, it's amazing. So this was, I think, was a really good adaptation. Better than the other movie adaptations we've had, I think. Um, and some of them, the you know, older ones that predate the... The, well, there's uh, some bad versions. Yeah, there's, there's there's older there's... ones that are more based directly on the book and not based on the the book you know, is the, theater the book is too much. But... Next, we have the Greatest Showman. This is you never watched this, did you? I've seen was... bits and pieces because Terry was obsessed was... with it. This was decent. Yeah. wasn't wasn't great, but, but decent. Like this is the opposite. This is brilliant. Oh yeah, the Little Shop of Horrors. The director's cut also includes the original ending. Which yeah, which I don't understand why they yeah. weren't allowed to do. No, they're amazing cast all the great 80s oh, favorites yeah. absolutely ew one you don't like but i think this is fantastic and i that, don't like the era of i know yeah, chicago diamond edition this is great you know uh, i don't know richard Gere was good in it Renee zellweger and Catherine zeta jones was fantastic what is this title what oh johnny cool oh yeah <laughs> No, that's not the title. Those oh. are the people. But Johnny Cool, uh, this is the rare case of a movie that Elizabeth Montgomery was in that actually has a decent oh, physical that's why release. We have that. Okay. Uh, and it, it's a decent, it's a decent like '60s kind of mob movie. Um, it's pretty good. Racism. But, <laughs> uh, but uh, the fact that Elizabeth Montgomery's in it and it, not a lot of their appearances have good physical releases because she did a lot of TV movies and things. This is too much. One of the funniest movies ever made from any decade. Peter Sellers, The Party. I'll watch this again and again until the That's day I die. That's just like an acid trip after a it's while. It's amazing. It gets, it's I love way too 60s far. stuff. It's, it's the party when it, at the end when it actually is a party. and like. No, it's like... It. This is outside of the Pink Panther. Like That might be my favorite Peter Sellers one. But close I like behind, the song. Close behind, uh, uh, super underrated that I never hear people talk about this, After the Fox. I like the song. This is great. Yeah, I know you like, you like the song. I like the song. After the Fox is fantastic. Ew. Now we have an all star all star cast of sixties people that I like. James Garner, the great Dick Van Dyke, Elka Summer, and Angie Dickinson, the art of love. Ew. And Dick Van Dyke is an artist who his friend convinces him that he's a failing artist and he convinces him he can kickstart his career by faking his death because art sells better when the artist dies. So what, a great interesting, plan. what a great it's, plan. Yeah. Claudette Colbert, uh, the Gilded Lily. You might like. No. You like a lot of Bad Girl. A movie about Amanda. No. Excuse you. <laughs> I have a lot of this good is, this 30s is stuff. Me. This is about you. I wake up, I wake screaming. Wake up screaming. This is a fantastic is film that? noir. It's a film noir. Uh, Victor Mature and Betty Grable are great. Carol Landis. Oh, I remember when you got this. Another one. Yes, this is an example of a TV movie. This is a good example. A lot of Elizabeth Montgomery stuff. Um, is TV movies, which a lot of them don't have physical releases or they're horrendous quality, but The Victim on Blu-ray starring Elizabeth Montgomery is from the, the 70s. This is just supposed to be witch. I like this next one. Yeah, this is one of the few Marilyn movies that you actually like. Yeah, because uh, she's not the focus. Yeah, but I love Marilyn. But 4K and Blu-ray combo of Some Like It Hot, the classic, classic comedy. And then the older standard Blu-ray of Some Like It Hot. Yeah. How to Marry a Millionaire. You like Lauren Bacall in this one. I do like her. And William Powell. Because she's a real person. William Powell's good. William Powell's good. really good. Niagara. 
one of her most underrated performances. River of No Return, one of the few times that I actually like a Western, mostly just because Marilyn. Gentlemen prefer blondes. Do they? <sighs> more Marilyn, one of her more iconic films, The Seven Year Itch. Continuing with the Stefan movies. The Misfits. This is actually, I think the standout performance here is actually Clark Gable. I think that's, he outshines Marilyn in that movie. Not hard to do. Uh, this is one of the many, the rest are all on DVD, but Marilyn Declassified. Corner reports and everything. Then we have from the now defunct Twilight Times, the Don't Bother to Knock, the most underrated Maryland performance ever. Some more clear her, top. Yes. Blue rays. The, yes. I have a second sealed copy of that because it's really hard to get a Blu-ray copy of, of that movie. And that studio is gone. That release line, the Twilight Time, How to Steal a Million. I saw part of that. That's a really funny movie. Great comedy, um, a drama with a slightly older Haley Mills and used to like the Disney era. But we have Take a Girl Like You, limited series. These are all very limited to I think 3,000 copies when they come out. So some are valuable than others. Twilight Time, we have Betty Grable, Pinup Girl, that famous pose. And this is a really good Japanese movie that had a horrendous American remake, but The Yellow Handkerchief, Twilight Time release. No, good one. Yes. Finally. And Criterion of I Married a Witch. Yeah. With Veronica Lake. I know you really like You yeah. enjoyed this movie a lot. She's pretty. It's one of the two movies that was the basis for Bewitched. And then another Amanda movie. Yes. We have Pan's Labyrinth. <gasps> Can you show that cover? I know one of your, <laughs> you know, your all-time favorites. It's Beautiful. When I first met you, I knew that was like... One of my faves. One of your faves. One of my faves, My Man Godfrey. Oh. One of the greatest, you know... Comedic See, this looks like the legend. Ever. Yeah, that does look like the arrow video. The indi arrow indicate, video. yeah, indicator. The yeah. arrow video is like on the bottom and like indicator's top. But this is the only indicator film that we have on Blu-ray because a lot of their stuff, at least from what I've seen, is a lot just doesn't interest me. But uh, Peter Sellers in Hoffman. This looked gross. This is this is a really good movie. I enjoyed this movie a lot. This was before this release. I had actually not seen this one. Uh, on it's on DVD, but this is the only Blu-ray release I've ever seen. Hoffman. That's a great collector's edition with this video of the essay and everything. Uh, starting the Warner Archive, we have some of my favorite Bogey and Bacall movies. We have To Have and Have Not and Key Largo. Then we have uh, Libeled Lady, a Gene Harlow, William Powell, Myrna Loy, Spencer Tracy, I mean, you can't beat that. All the people. All star cast. Great classic comedy. And a bunch more William Powell, Myrna Loy. Hope they keep going with the movies they were in. The Thin Man, After the Thin Man, Another Thin Man, Shadow of the Thin Man, All of the Thin Men, The Thin Man Goes Home, and the last one, Song of the Thin Man. I love that the same doggies in all of them. Yeah, they have the Astas and he's in all of them. Then we have, this is a great Cary Grant, Myrna Loy. Again, Myrna Loy, always playing the, the perfect wife. Uh, Mr. Blandings builds his dream house. I've seen that like this five is, million times. I know, I love this. this. I love this. It's I've great. only seen the first like part of it. Yeah, you only see part of it. Five million times. Another good Elka Summer. This was uh, Paul Newman, The Prize. This was a great movie all no. about, yeah, you know, it's, yeah, it's all about I've the I've never seen it, I don't know. It's all about the Pulitzer Prize and an imposter and it turns into this big dramatic thing. It's really good. Um, Sunday in New York, uh, decent romantic, again, I love these 60s kind of romantic comedies, this one, Jane Fonda. These are all Stefan movies. I love, yeah, these Warner Archives. Then we have Barbara Stanwyck in Ladies They Talk About. And Warner Archives, this is gone now? No, Warner Archives is still continue? going strong now. That is? Okay. There was a couple of years ago, because there's new, they... That's right. They got rid of the site and they moved to now it's just on Amazon. There's an That's Amazon right. Warner Archive page and they went through a lot of changes so it was for a little bit like, oh my gosh, is Warner Archive going away? But thankfully, they continued dinner at 8. This is fantastic. This is one of the few of these, or very few of these I think you would like. It's not for you. But this I actually think you would like. Gene Harlow is brilliant in this. I mean, the whole cast is. This one I want to watch. That's a good. Yeah, this one I want to watch because they're both big Star Trek fans, but two other Gene Roddenberry projects, Genesis 2 and Planet Earth, the original Dylan Hunt. We used that name a couple times. How many and things do we have? Howard Hawks? Well, just the original and the remake. But uh, this is the original Howard Hawks, The Thing from Another World. 
This is actually a really decent sci-fi movie from the time. I, I really enjoy this one. Uh, it's just one of those rare cases where the remake is significantly better. But that's a good movie in its own right. Really. Nothing. It's not. Um, Our Dancing Daughters of Joan Crawford. Love when we get some 30s movies on the Warren Archive. Dancing Daughters. <sighs> I know. You... You said on, we were going on a trip with Amanda's parents in their RV, and you said if we watch this movie one more time, I'm going to shoot myself. And your dad cracked up. He like cackled. The long, long trailer, because you've seen it a hundred million times, and your parents watch it all the time, especially when they go on trips. They watch RV, It's Rome a Williams. funny movie, but it's not... I love it. This is one of my favorite movies. You just, the it's whole time, just you are that. just... Yeah. It doesn't matter how many times you've heard it. Yeah. It just, the whole time. It's it's brilliant. Like I will sit there and watch this whole movie with your parents, and we'll have a great time. And you will sit there and stew. It's, really it's not a bad movie. But just you, you've seen it too many times. I know. Too many times. I know. Uh, Joan Crawford in Dance Fools. Dance. This was a lot of fun too. I love a lot of the like uh, young society types in twenties and thirties. That era is really good. Uh, one of my favorite documentaries because it's a great look at the time period as well as the as prohibition itself but the ken burns ken burns pbs documentaries love them i really like this one this is the only one we have on blu-ray Prohibition's such a weird thing but i love the time period and like what i don't know it's just one of my favorite periods in history so most of them we have on dvd but prohibition one we have on on blu-ray then imax deep sea which also has some some 3d support and the next one's good this is really good. This Cave of Forgotten Dreams. Yes. I can't wait to watch this one in particular in 3D. With a, it has a tour of the cave in that's 3D. That's really cool. So that's one I haven't seen yet in 3D that I'm really looking forward to. And then we have Yosemite, the High Sierras from the National Park Exploration Sometimes series. Sometimes Stefan just has these on in the background. I love these for that. The Glacier National Park. And these are just a great way of having just kind of atmosphere when you're working or doing other things and just seeing the beautiful sights, seeing especially places that you've never been or maybe you went once in your lifetime and, and seeing, I love these but national This one ones. is like next level. This one is this great. This is too much. Yeah, this is this is awesome. This magnificent Italia. This is, how many hours? I forget how many three hours. hours? Is, no, it's like three crazy, No, it's three, it's 11 hours. I remember it's it was like Lord of the crazy. Rings. Like, like I can I've watch never, Lord of the Rings. Like, yeah. It is three Blu-rays, 11 hours of footage of, of Italy. Just... I mean, I went to Italy is great, chapters. but 11 hours of it. Yeah. I mean, I've never, like, sat and watched 11 hours of it, but, like, in the background, it's, it's beautiful to have them kind of look while you're doing things and hear the music, and it's great. Um, but, yeah, it's not something you don't want to, like, sit and just watch for 11 hours. I can never do that. But, yeah, I, forget. I always forget how long it is because it's some crazy number, but 11 hours. And then we have the Bruce Lee Criterion this is really Collection. Pretty. It is a gorgeous release. I like having them all in like one set, one nice set for Bruce Lee. This I'm not is a really big cool. Bruce Lee fan. I like a Bruce Lee. I'm not like a super fan, but I, I do really enjoy him. I like Enter the Dragon a lot. Um, and in general, I just really like having. That's a great set for me. And we have one when random. You, yeah, one you do love for this animation is one of classic. My favorite. This is the Enchanted Edition mm -hmm. of The Last Unicorn, one of my favorite Peter Beagle books. Mm -hmm. I don't know. This is a really weird art style, and the reason that it's with this you next love it. Yeah. shelf is because some of the people who yes. drew some of this yeah. eventually yeah. became Studio, Studio Ghibli, Ghibli. Yep. which I think is so cool. Yeah. So now we're getting into the Ghibbles. Yes. And I'm yeah. so mad because there's like four more movies. Why yeah. can't you just finish it? What is it? Shout Factory doing it? It's Shout Factory. Just do They're it. doing it with, with do a it. pairing with G Kids. And they're releasing these these st steel books. Not quite in order, but it's fine. All right, so we have Kiki's Delivery Service, and they have these beautiful they're Blu-ray DVD combos, so which is great. We have unboxing the shelf all space. Of these. Yes, unboxing on the on the channel for all of these Kiki's Delivery Service only yesterday. Really pretty colors. I love the Orco Rosso. colors. And I wish they would just announce if they're if they say the deal's gone and they're not gonna finish those last like four then just movies. Tell us. Just say it and then we'll just buy the regular Blu-rays. Or we're just we've been waiting because like to complete our set because we're hoping they come out with them, Whisper of the Heart. Yeah, it's really frustrating. It's nice having point. a whole set. Nausicaa, the Valley of the Wind. Castle in the Sky. And we're waiting to kind of watch them because I have only watched like yeah, because I've, I've seen them all now. You have not. This one has gone crazy. 
Uh, this one's the only one that's just a Blu-ray. It doesn't have the DVD accompanying it, but Grave of the Fireflies... But it has back art. It has back art. Slightly different release than the other ones. This is with the Sentai film works. And the Grave of the Fireflies is always kind of weird. But my neighbor Totoro, there's the releases. Princess Marogi, my personal favorite. Know what my uh, by is. Spirited Away. I think it also, but, you never know, it could change because you haven't seen a lot of them. I love Spirited Away. No, yeah, Spirited Away. But I also love Smallville. House Moving. Yes. The Cat Returns. House Moving Castle. That's, I don't know, that might be. But I feel like I feel like there's so many in here that you haven't seen that you like that you never know. I can't decide what your favorite's going to be on you. I'll have to watch them all. Rank them. Yeah. Secret World of Parody. Well, I'd be really curious, and I think viewers would probably be curious to see what my favorites are compared to your favorites after watching them. And a lot of them I have not re-watched in a long time, so it'd be cool to revisit some of the ones I haven't come up on Poppy Hill seen in a while. Because there's certain staple ones, like Princess Monarchy, I'll watch them a bunch of times. The Wind Rises. The Tale of Princess Kaguya. This is one of those that I'm really curious to see what you think, because it's very different in style. Uh, when Marine... When Marnie was there. I always want to say Marine. I don't know why. Every time when Marnie was there. And this one, wasn't there an issue with it and we had to get it again? Yeah, this is one that I think it was, yeah, the, the title wasn't on the spine. So then they kept us they a, sent new... a new one. Yeah, that one was on the shoes. And this Here one we're you didn't want to get. Goro movie. Yeah. Another but, very rare case where the book was not as good as the movie. Yeah, that was pretty disappointing. But even the movie felt like it needed. Yeah, it needed some 10 more. minutes, like it wasn't quite there. Uh, and this is a special Princess Mononoke set that has a soundtrack and a 40 page art book and has like an essay booklet and all that stuff, along with a Blu ray copy of the movie. And that is it for this part. Whew. We will see you. This is what, part three? Part three. I'm like, doing it so long. Uh, but so, part four, the last part, will be up next.